Hello, hello everyone, it's Lennon and today I wanted to chat about a lovely deck that I found and I I think that this is fairly old. Uh, I don't, I mean, it's not a new release by any stretch, but when I saw some of the cards, um, there aren't a lot of unboxing on YouTube, but I were, I was able to kind of Google some of the images and see them and they were very thoth like and i love that they're like wood blocky and they're in black and white and it's called the light and shadow tarot now if you're already versed with my channel you know already that i am a thoth girl i love the system i don't think all the cards are thoth like i just think that some of the um some of the cards are very uh thothy and I love the idea of having a black and white Thoth-like deck just for like in terms of shadow work even. Something that, a system that I know, something that I can draw from because it just seems to me if it's going to be based on a system that I know and love and work with actively, then of course it will definitely be a tarot that I will inevitably work with, no doubt. And so when I was studying this online, I say studying, when I look through certain cards and I read uh, cer certain people's uh, personal accounts of the deck or whatever, I really try to sit with the images and see if this is something that I would work with. Because after a couple of months of doing that, and I just really am feeling a doubt or this is just going to be one of those that sits on the shelf and I just really love the, I love the idea of having it, but not really, then I, I won't, I won't push the buy now button. So this is by Michael Copeford and Brian Williams. I believe that, um, Brian Williams is the, like the, uh, author and Michael Copeford does the illustrations, which are basically like this wood block prints. This box is so cute. Put the trash anywhere, people. Um, okay, how do we open this? Oh. Ooh, look at this chunky book. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, and they've got pictures too. Oh yes, let me smell it. Okay, just, they have a little poem here for, let's see if that's for every, yes. Okay, it says, for the Empress card, it says, I am Empress, fertile, full, glorious mother ever giving, my comfortable breast to all daughters and sons. Wow, I love that. I love that. Okay, yeah. Um, let me, let's just take a look-see at the beginning. Table of Contents. Uh, okay, so they got the Major Arcana, the Miners, oh, they go Queen, King, Princess, Prince, oh, I'm gonna do Prince and Princess, yes, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Ooh, Tarot Divination and Meditations, uh, y'all, okay, okay, let's put that away, oh my god, these cards are so big, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna get some scissors. Okay, definitely a trim job coming up. <laughs> this is so crazy. It does, this full does look very thought. There's a monkey and the alligator or a crocodile, I'm sorry. The all seeing eye, the butterfly of ideas I love these, uh, je this jester-like hat here, and he is holding the prism of the Allfather, so that is very Thoth. And then the two babies, this um, non-manifested egg of the world, that's what that represents. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at the backs. They're not reversible, which I love because you guys know I don't. Reversals. Oh, the pentacle, the cup, the sword and the wand oh I love that okay that is definitely that is a great back okay uh yeah definitely I, I mean can I even shuffle these eh, 
maybe, 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 baby. Okay. Uh, this car stock is very flimsy. Maybe after I cut it, it'll, you know how you, when you, when you trim decks, it kind of tends to thicken it up a little bit around the edges. So it's easier to grab instead of this flimsy shit. <laughs> so anyway, Ooh, look at the magician. I love that there's a magician here. And there's like these arrows. It's almost like they're in a swamp almost, but I like, like see his legs. Like he's here, but then there's also here, like he's going into the cup. He's, and there's all these tools. Now, someone said um, about the fish. I know that I watched, it was either an article or a video of an unboxing and someone said that they didn't understand the fish. The, the guidebook for this says that this is the like food chain. So the chain of life, the chain of how it's going to be a fish eats a fish, eats a fish, eats a fish. And I interpreted it like intuitively as this being the salmon going upstream and having, and how they're using their intuition, using the tools they have to go back to where they were born. And it's just about being birthed and cycles of life to me, um, that the salmon in this, or the fish to me were salmon. And that's what that meant to me. So that's a very beautiful card. I love how the fish are eating him as well. <laughs> high priestess. Look at this high priestess. Holy shit. Like, I love that there's a triple moon up here because y'all know that I have a triple moon practice, but Look at the fact that there's three faces as well. There's this face, this face, and then this face of her. Her great breasts, her great torso. And then she seems to have this scroll open on her lap. Not in secret, but that she is an eternal student herself. And that, she, yes, she may know all and she is all. And there's a sense of mystery with her. But she still has to continue to read. She still has to continue to evolve with the times. She's just not going to be this high priestess that, you know, like your grandmother, they, they pass on words of wisdom, like, you know, uh, that don't really go with the times anymore. It's like, you know, yeah, right. Grandma. Okay. You realize it's 2020, right? <laughs> Stuff like that. You have those types of dialogues now. So the high priestess is constantly evolving to me. And I love the fact that this, I mean, of course she's got all the other, the rest of the symbolism that, uh, is needed, but the fact that she's open here with this scroll tells me that she's constantly evolving as well for the better of us. <gasps> Look at this Empress. I love how she has all the Queens, all the Queens down here seated almost throned and then she's just this this almost this, the macrocosm of the queens and i love that representation here um she's also got the sunflower i mean these are very i can see thoughty <laughs> thoughty uh symbolism is in here as well i love these rams here like there's so much ram of course because he's aries but i love that he is there's just, there's like, seem to be symbols hidden within symbols. I actually like that behind him seems to be this very chaotic city. Um, also, he has a, this coat of arms here with all the symbols of the suits in it. But he seems to be almost Hierophant-esque in his stance here because there seems to be like a chaotic city behind him. That means that he's standing on this, standing up to this, you know, podium here and addressing the city in a more like almost like in a in an emperor way of uh, uh more so than we you know we usually sit them see, see them sitting on thrones and they're very stoic you know and very masculine but this seems very prince-esque to me or very king-like of course i mean being the emperor but there seems to be a teacher aspect of it. And I think that I like having this look like he's addressing us. So he might be the regular teacher, the, the real material teacher of the material things like in the suits. But then the Hierophant here is 
the spiritual teacher. I love all this uh, thoughty symbolism. He sits on the, like, here's the elephant, right, for a Taurus, and he sits on the bull. He looks like he's actually riding the bull, which I think, because in the Thoth tarot, the Hierophant is right, like, sitting on top of the bull. But I like how they, this woodblock makes it seem like he's riding it like a horse. And you still see, you see the pentagram here with the little child in it. I uh, love that. Ooh, look, there's, look at all the sacred symbols down here. Like you see these cups and the, and the pentacle. You see the sword and the wand. So all the suits. I love how they're incorporating the suits in all of these because that's present and that needs to be present in the major arcana because it's all linked together. It's not, we separate them, but I love that these interpretations don't separate them. I really do like that. And he has this, this sepulcher here that is, of the Trinity. I love that. Um, there is a lot of Thoth symbolism here. I love that there's a lily and a rose because that calls to the spiritual for me, this sort of life and death aspect of the Hierophant, um, this sort of macro and microcosm aspect of the Hierophant. Uh, I, th I really do think they did a great job on these so far. Ooh, wow. Look at this lover's card. This is excellent. I love like if we turn the card like this and we see this corner right here. This looks like a horizon. Uh, like this is the city and then it's like a sunrise or maybe a sunset. The angel is still present here in this corner. We see these two figures down here and whether or not it's meant to look this way, they look blindfolded to me. Uh, I like this heart. Look at that. That's cute as shit. Um, but there's, it's almost like this lovers is is about the caress more so than the choice more so than we're having to we're having to make a choice it's not more like that for for me i think that this is more of a choosing the life partner that makes you feel this way this is definitely a beautiful image i'll say that ooh look at this chariot now in the Thoth deck, I love that the, this, uh, the figure of the chariot is holding the Holy Grail. This um, Holy Grail being the, the cup of life, the, the essence of life. And I love that. See, right here, there's just two. It's just the, the I guess, the eagle and the bull. And um, the crab here because the chariot is cancer. But I, I very much like the Buddha-esque of this. This... Um, feeling of being in motion, but then also being um, meditative as well. So there needs to be some semblance of, yes, we're moving. And that's why the chariot right here, the chariot wheels are doing this because it, because if it was just straight on, you wouldn't be able to see the wheels. But um, I like how this is drawn to look like this. But in the thought deck, you can really see the movement. You can't tell in this. It, you do kind of see that these... Like they're all tied to get, you know, they're all tied up and, and mangled. But I like how they're looking back at him. And it seems to be like it could be in movement, it could not, but there it's more about the meditative aspect of the chariot card as well. I like that. Now I love having Justice as eight. That's very thoughty. So I love that. I love how they have this uh zodiacal and planetary symbols right here. Look at these storks. That's awesome. Now to me, storks look a lot like ibises. So, um, I mean, I think the only difference is a curved beak. I mean, there might be more differences, but the the yin yang and the I, I like the as a, as as above so below aspect in this. There is a sense of balance and how the stork she's holding this like her her scales is what she's holding onto, and they're made of these storks, which could be the ibis which could be thought, which could be wisdom and knowledge and all that and how she's balancing the two. But then also this below aspect here, she's shedding what is not serving in order to keep the balance and how there is a level of intelligence and wisdom that comes with that. Um, I'd like to think that that would be what it was. Look at this beautiful hermit. Oh my goodness. This candle here with the yin yang in it is like the, I think that that's the best thing I've ever seen. I do love these um, these this Indian symbolism within this deck so far. 
Now, I like that these look kind of like rosy thorns, and this bird is caught in it, and I like how he is looking at the bird, but then this is like, as it's shining light, it's shining light on the rosy thorns, and it's almost like the light of truth being the light of balance, and I don't know. I think that I like that. Uh, it says the Buddha, which is up here, to me... I like that symbolism again of the slowness of the slowness and the meditative um, aspect of the hermit. The guidebook for this says, "The Buddha-faced snail crawls above the hermit's head, making a turban of its shell. Like the snail, the, st the hermit is slow and steady. He is withdrawn from the hurly burly of the world, just as the snail can w withdraw into its shell." That's a beautiful message. And how we sometimes we must withdraw. And in the withdrawal, well, we may find the flame of truth. It's beautiful. Look at this wheel of fortune. Look at this beautiful sphinx here. Again, with the Buddha face. And how it, this whole wheel has feet. It's beautiful. T-A-R-O. So they did put the T-A-R-O around the wheel, which that's pretty cool. They still have the fixed symbols around the eagle. That's not an eagle, but it looks like one. I uh, guess that would be a bull. Anyway, there's so much, there's so many faces in this. You know, it'll take a couple of tries to figure them out. I love this. Look, this is like a fish inside the Sphinx's body right here. I mean, there's so much with this deck. Look at this strength card. Now, I know that a lot of people don't like the lust card in the Thoth. And for me, that's, that's a very powerful image to me because of the way I work with the Whore of Babylon and the Scarlet Woman. I work with her in my practice. Um, this form of dark feminine that is the strength and it's all. The, the Bana, the Great Mother, the darkness. And... A lot of people that study the tarot don't really see the strength card as that, even if we work with the strength, uh, even if we work with the thought system, I've, I've noticed a lot of people don't really use Crowley's take on the Whore of Babylon and what that may represent. So this is just basically a, the, I guess you would call it the normal representation of what strength is, this, this sense of control over the primal aspects of ourselves. I love that this is about controlling our primal urge, but then her hair is all flying everywhere. Uh, I love that. Look at this hangman. Oh, I say that for every card. This is just insane. This sends this balancing act with night and day. The onk here that's holding him up. The, the roots down here, I love, see in the Thoth deck, I see this as flowing water. And we've turned ourselves around so that we can strengthen our spine to get to the receptive of the brain. And sometimes we have to completely change our thought patterning mindsets and um, perspectives in order to see the greater truth, which is down here in the waters. Um, like the waters of the, you have to change your perspective to get to the waters of the high priestess, basically, is the way I think of it. I love that this is kind of water back here so look this he's like chained with these vines that's a that's a cool take i guess <gasps> this card is called the endless dance of death oh my goddess they did not name this card this oh my god I love this because my favorite musical composition of all time is called Dance Macabre. And it's basically based off of this um, epic poem that is about death, right? And how the devil rises on at Samhain and plays his violin for all the skeletons to rise and dance. And, and then at the stroke of midnight, which you do hear in the musical composition, you hear the, strike, the strikes of um, dawn. Or no, you hear the rooster crow. You hear the midnight uh, chime at the beginning of the of the musical composition. But then I love the the rooster crow and how they have how they have the oboe do that. That's just uh, ingenious. But that's my favorite musical composition. To have this be the endless dance of death reminds me of the inevitability of death. How we are all dancing with death and how it's all 
riding on our back and the sadness and inevitability of that sadness is just it's a, it's a beautiful take. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to trim this thing because I want the names here. I might just trim here like a little bit off the edge. Maybe you'll leave the top how it is and then the sides to match the bottom and then or maybe just the sides. I don't know. I'll probably have to cut the bottom. Anyway, I'm trying to do that as I talk about this deck. Temperance. I like this um, aspect of the sun, like we see in the Rider Waite. Also, this crown over. I kind of like this dragonfly esque, these dragonfly esque wings. That's a, that's a cool take, but I don't really see much else to talk about with that. Ooh, look at this sexy devil. I love this inverted pentagram here. These two faces that's almost like they're hugging him. Uh, or they're they're so close that they like these two figures are so close and then these figures are wrapped around this what probably seems like they're chained to something down here like the chains what we see usually in the Rider weight deck I love that these eyes look kind of drunk um, like kind of pulls to the addiction aspect of it for me but then also this Baphomet symbolism here but look at this mirror that speaks to me of vanity and then this snake here pulls me to the magus card and then this hourglass may pull us to may uh for me that could that could mean a lot of things uh the hourglass could just mean time in general the time it takes for us to get out of an get, to get out of a uh I'll say to get out of something that has been overpowering us, not necessarily an addiction. It's beautiful. Look at this tower. All these figures have really nice bubble butts. <laughs> I like the C here. Um, also, this nod to the nail right here, because this used to be the house of God, right? And so this could just be the fall of man. The, the fall of Jesus, the fall of whoever, and this is this Tower of Babel like symbolism that I'm getting with this, this all seeing eye that's seeing it all this, the, in the future. And there's so much to be said here. I love that this tower looks like a city, which that's why it reminds me of the Tower of Babel. See, I always associate the star with hope, and I love that these hands tend to be clasping the hope um, because that's what we do with hope. We hold it near and dear to us. I like these Twilight Zone-like wings that she possesses. But the shards of light here that are emanating from this does speak to me of Pandora's box type of a type of a thing. That's just a beautiful, beautiful. Damn, there's a lot going on with the moon card. I do like the dog and the wolf here because that's just needs to be in the moon card for me. This uh, crustacean here. I like the path is within a city. Like here's these pillars, right? The pillars of uh, the, the normal pillars, the path will, that we lead. I like how back here it may look like it's lit, but because this is dark, then this is what is in shadow. And we have, you know, we have to decide what we put forth in the shadow and what we put put into light. I like how these, the dog and the wolf here, instead of like, because in the Rider Waite deck, we don't think of them as guards of the path, but they could just be, but they could be. I mean, because of these posts here, it does kind of look like there's a bridge here and they're guarding it, almost like troll-esque. Um, I'd like, I'd like to study that a little bit more too in terms of this deck. <gasps> Look at this beautiful mandala here. This is a beautiful sun card. I love this um, uh, Indian. I guess it would be like an almost like a Calcutta esque city below the sun. And this is the, this mandala speaks to me of sand, uh, the dawn of time, the the monks that make the mandalas only to blow it out of existence. I love that these look like people. Um, this the head, shoulders, arms, and feet, and how that's all connected around speaks to me of happiness and our own happiness when we are with other people and how 
it needs to be that needs to be a factor in having people in our lives that we don't feel burdened by the people in our lives because that's never fun probably some symbolism here as well somewhere but right now I'm just seeing a very basic Rider Waite Smith judgment card oh this is a beautiful I love this symbol on her head it may look like a Lemna Scott but for me that is a very goddess uh, symbolism as well uh, again with the fixed zodiac signs I love this um, turtle here with the babe in the middle but then also this spiral here that calls to me from birthing the world, the spiral nature of the universe itself. Um, I don't know. It's just this, these, she's emanating these, these flowers here, I guess. This just pulls to me as more of a universe card, which is how I take it from the thought anyway. Okay, so that was the major arcana. We're going to go a little bit faster with um, the... Let's move this away. I'm going to go a little bit faster with the um, liners. Well, here we have the wands. The uh, We're going to look at the court cards first because that just happens to be what's first. I love this king of wands here. There just seems to be some light and a horse. Um, this is a very... So anyway, there's a lot going on here that I'll have to study more. This is a very Thoth-like queen of wands which i love the 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 cougar and the flower symbolism here Ooh, look at these love these this fishy like uh this i love the fish symbolism here this may be something huh i thought it might have been a zodiac kind of a thing but it's not but I love that this this water seems to be sprouting out of her head like a divine divine spark of something I love that it's very thought like these are very thought like and I'm just doing a general look see people um of these cards real fast Feel free to pause as I do this. I, I see, I love in the thought, the Queen of Swords is holding the head of John the Baptist. And it's a very Salome type of a uh, figure because to me, it just calls to the, like, the person, the figure in the Queen of Swords to me is someone that speaks their mind. And when they don't get what they want, there just seems to be an aspect of like cruelty in a shadow aspect of that. Lovely. Oh, look at this King of Pentacles. Now in the Thoth, we see a, a figure much like this. This He's not really in action. He's more just kind of um, observing his land. And I, I love that he's just kind of sitting there on his horse like he's making rounds, basically. Look at this, this goat. This was this is my all-time favorite card. The Queen of Pentacles is probably my all-time favorite card in the Thoth deck. Um, one of them, one of my favorite court cards, I'll say, because I've got so many in that that deck, <laughs> so many favorites. Mm, look at these. I do love how they're doing prince and princess here. I like how she seems to be riding this beast, uh, this you know sacred cat beast. But then her breasts and legs seem to be part of the face. I love that they have done this with these wood blocks. I love how these seem to be a pair. That just further uh, cements to me that about the these will eventually be the king and queen one day. Um, that's how Crowley takes. That's what his take is. I like how she's riding a dolphin and he is riding a swordfish. Lots of sacred symbolism. I love the lotuses because that's sacred in the cup suit for, for Crowley. <clears throat> Ooh, look at this sacred air. Like this owl. I love that. I like that how they still put the throne here. How that seems to be an altar and this is like sacred smoke and she's cutting through the smoke. as this princess of air. Love that. Look at this slingshot. You go. I like this bison here. That's cool. 
instead of it being a horse, instead of her riding this, uh, instead of them being on horseback, they seem to be riding sacred animals, embodying these sacred animals. And I think that, that is a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, I don't really know much what to do with the angel wings of this card, but just yet another layer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the minor arcana. Okay, I think that that'll work just fine because we're going to kind of go fast with the minors. I do like how the minors, uh, from what I could see, they tended to blend Thoth and Rider Waite. Um, and as they all kind of derive from this hermetic order of the Golden Dawn, then that makes a lot of sense. And these creators just happen to blend or take away aspects of one system that they liked from the other and just kind of decided what they wanted to keep in the card and what resonated with them and went that route. And I love that. I think that that's what makes a tarot deck special. And I think that that's what makes it personal is that when you use a deck and... That's basically like saying, <clears throat> make a deck of all your favorite Major Arcana. I know that that is like a, a tag going around, right? So if that's the case, then it's like, we wouldn't just pick, like, happen to be from all one deck. Yes, we love certain systems. Yes, we love certain decks. But if we personally had a, a you know, had to make up our own deck, it would be derived from many decks, um, those the the majors so i just love how they blended the two these aces are i can see a lot of like with this i like how they used leaves for the yods instead of the yods of fire like crowley did and they put the bird here in the clouds this is a very thothy uh ace of swords here I, i'm wondering if they're going to keep the figures the humanoid figures in the pentacles we'll see anyway it's just something i wanted to say about the aces about the minors in general too i love the sense of duality in all of these twos there's just so something so beautiful about them uh, another uh nod to the lily and the rose or like how the heart uh the world symbol is in his heart almost like a severe wanderlust which i don't really f it, it, i think that the card represents wanderlust in a sense but i don't really get that with the rider weight it's more so where can i go next not so much a heartfelt wanderlust. So that's really cool. I do still like the sacred lotuses um, because like I said, Crowley uses a lot of lotuses in terms of the suit of cups. Um, this nod to the Thoth here with the Lemniscot that happens to be an, an Ouroboros around these two figures. That's a really good. I love this representation here. So cool. Oh, look at the threes. Again, there's a lot of nods to the writer weight, like with this um, and with this, this like working the ladder aspect. That's a writer weight. I like how this figure seems to be climbing the trees, almost kind of Pocahontas-esque. Like, what can you see, child? Uh, I like that. These, these wood blocks are very, very nice. I do want to say one more thing about the minor arcana that I love how the creators did do what Crowley did and... Put the zodiacal and planetary symbolism on the cards. I love that. This placement here of these of this four of swords is a nod to the Thoth because this is exactly what the Thoth looks like, um, or how it looks in the uh, in his deck. The wands here. I like that this seems to be like a portal. We're going through the portal to get to the celebration. Um, maybe they're like, like like almost like prep. Uh, a preparation towards a celebration. I, I like that kind of a take with this. This is very Crowley-esque with the structure. I like these circles. How, um, yes, we can be structured and be... Uh, look at all these muscles. This is just insane. Love that. But I like how the circles break up the structure. And uh, that there's something sacred in breaking up the structure that we've built for ourselves too. It's not about always being stoic. Look at the stripes here. Very chaotic. I love this uh, Scarlett O'Hara figure here. It's like, oh, fiddle dee dee type of a hand on the forehead. This, I love how the, the, I love the way that they have, that they have used perspective in these cards. Because with woodblocks, it's hard 
to sometimes get the perspective that we need. But I like how we see the camera seems to be on the ground here and we're looking way up this, this structure that they, these people are having to build and it's about working together and always, you know, maybe not always agreeing. Um, I like the chaos in this, these, they look like insects. So to me, that's like these people wading through this almost like circadian lotus swarm, you know, and that there's some, definitely some desolation in that. Like you're getting trapped somehow in this swarm of insects. Again, I like that this figure is putting the laurel wreath on this figure. It reminds me of a Robin Hood, a sense of, Crowley calls this card Valor, so that calls that calls to me on a, I need to fight for injustice, but I don't necessarily need the glory that comes along with the victory of that. Um, I just need to fight to fight. I love this give and take here. There's still that semblance. Uh, even if this is a nostalgia card to me, it just, it seems to be, there is a give and a take with this figure giving money, this figure giving the flowers. There just seems to be this rotation here that, that I see and I need to see in this card. This is all kinds of chaotic. I love the threes on the threes, but then this cross um, is a nod to the Thoth, of course, and then this figure by himself going towards the windmill, possibly to work. I don't know. I like how his little knapsack here is Aquarius. That's kind of cute. Ooh, look at these sevens. I like this, how this figure is not a real figure, how this figure is so blocked by his fairy thoughts, his fairy wishes, and there's too many wishes for him to, he's just, he's kind of lost as, an aspect of himself here. That's that's a very cool take. This is very Rider weight. So is this. I like how, I don't know, this, there seems, I can really tell the melancholy here, and right here, this is what the Thoth looks like. This is how the Thoth is structured for this particular card. And then this, having this figure here is a nod to the right of weight. So I love how they blended the two decks. I just love that. Um, also, this figure here too kind of looks blended more. To me, this more looks like a Genghis Khan type figure. So that's that can be interesting. Ooh, I do like how they kept the flowers here. I love this aspect in the Thoth deck. Um, and this figure seems to be like get, maybe getting a tap, like a sap tap in the tree. Um, like they've, like there was so much work involved and now we're kind of reaping the benefits. We're structured, so now we can reap the benefits kind of a thing. Uh, I This card stood out to me only because I like my eight, my eight of swords to look bound, but then you can get out of the binding. But you can't really tell that she can get out of here. So, eh. I love this. I love that there is a hot air balloon. I think that that is an ingenious way of um, finding new paths and, and structuring your own paths. I like that. I like the chaos of this, this card as well. It's kind of a nod to how Crowley wanted his card to be painted for that one as well. I love this. We all know the lady that has her pet falcon in the Nine of Pentacles. I do see a very good semblance of I I know what success feels and tastes like, and I'm happy with what I was I have a you know I was able to accomplish. I can tell that and feel that in this card, and I like that. Um, also, this figure very right of weight, but the, the structure of the swords in the background is just like the structure of the swords in this card in the Thoth deck, except there's no blood dripping um, down from the cards. This figure here is very right of weight, but I love the nod to the lotuses. That's how Crowley uh, fills his cups in the cup suit is by the lotus flowers. I love that that is, there's a nod to both here. I love the all-seeing eyes on these wands. That's definitely a, uh, something that I'll have to read more in the guidebook and see what it says. And last but not least, the tens. We went really fast with this, but I just wanted to give a touch of this deck for you guys. 
I like how there's a, a humanoid figure on his back. Like burdens come in many, many things, um, in many ways. And it may not be just our creativity. It could be that somebody else stole an idea or it could be someone burdening us or restricting us from having an idea. And burdens look different for everyone. And I, I really like the fact that it could be something or someone that's the burden. And I think that's very powerful. I like how these seem to be the children here that we see in the Rider Waite and then these blocks of adults embracing these this sacred geometry here um, as the as the cups that's just like more so on the shards of glass that we see in a lot of the suits in Crowley's deck. This is just very Rider Waite. There's really nothing to say about this. I like that there's a man and a child here. Again, nodding to the Rider Waite as far as for me, this is a family legacy, you know, pulling, uh, inheriting the family business, so to speak, and how the child is very much in the process of being with the father to be, to become learned in whatever the family business is. So I was pleasantly surprised by the stack. I really do like how they've blended the Rider weight system and the Thoth system. I am going to have to trim this so that I'll be able to shuffle and work with it in the best way for me. So I'll definitely leave pictures on my Instagram, the which the handle will be down below if you want to check my Instagram feed out. And I will also leave a link to this deck for purchase. It's still available on Amazon. That's where I got it. So be sure to check it out if this is something that jobs with you. I was really, I, I'm really happy to see how the cards look and really happy to like even go in this guidebook and see what all they say. I mean, there's a poem and a meaning. Um, of course, it's not reversible. So, oh, see the two of wands with that lily and the rose. It says, rose and lily crossed for a hybrid will. The influence of this plan reigns over all the land. I love that. So anyway, I'm, I'm excited to dive into the guidebook. Uh, if not for nothing else, just to give me a little clarifier as to how the, you know, where the creators were coming from, but mostly because I like both the right away and the Thoth system, I'm excited to look at this and work with this intuitively as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a walk, a walk through per se, but I was really excited to see all the cards. So I hope to see everyone again on the channel. Don't forget to check the links below. Much love.